What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Not Entertained Podcast, your home for entertainment, media, and culture. I'm your host, Gents, and on today's episode, I'll be giving you my personal opinion on the ongoing wave of superhero movies. It's no secret that we're in the quote-unquote age of superhero films. 20 years ago, superhero movies were few and far between, but for the last six going on seven years, somewhere between three to eight superhero films are being released per year, and 2019, 2020, and 2021 will be no different. Just to give you a quick preview, here's some of what you can expect in the near future from DC Comics. Just last week, Shazam came out. This October, we can expect the Joker movie played by Joaquin Phoenix. We have the Birds of Prey movie. We have a Wonder Woman sequel, a Suicide Squad sequel, an Aquaman sequel. Not to mention DC will be continuing to expand their live action series on their streaming platform DC+. From Marvel Studios, you can expect Avengers Endgame at the end of this month, X-Men Dark Phoenix, Spider-Man Far From Home, New Mutants, and the Gambit standalone movie. Even Dark Horse Comics and Image Comics are getting in on the action with their adaptations of Hellboy and Spawn respectively. If you're looking for a full breakdown of superhero movies that are on their way so you can mark your calendars, go ahead and check out Collider's article. I'll be posting a link to it in the description below and shout out to them for their help in compiling that list. So now that you got an idea of what's coming over the next two years, there's some questions that we got to ask ourselves. The most obvious question being, when is enough enough? How many more superhero films will it take for you to become less excited for their release? Will it take 20 movies, 40 movies, or are you on the opposite side of the spectrum where you want as many superhero movies in theaters as possible? For me, I could say I'm more in the camp of the former. As great as this initiative has been to bridge the gap between nerd culture and mainstream culture, I think it gets a little tiresome after a while, especially in two instances. The first instance being quality control. I won't name names, but it's clear that no matter the studio or the comic brand, not all superhero movies are created equal. On top of that, it's clear that with these movies, we're talking big money, millions of production budgets, and hundreds of millions at box offices. So very rarely do directors turn down the opportunity to helm a particular series, especially if they're fans. That said, it's clear that the golden standard for directing these types of films are the Russo brothers, Christopher Nolan, and arguably Tim Burton. That's not to say other directors shouldn't be considered, but more so that of the dozens and dozens of superhero films and the directors that were responsible for them, arguably only four people directed a superhero movie in such a fashion that the majority of consumers regard their work as standouts of the genre. I know for at least myself that movie tickets are only becoming more expensive. When I go to the theater, I want it to be for something that's worth my money, but more importantly, worth my time. If there's a new superhero film on the way and any news of or rumors of a tumultuous production come out, if the script isn't complete by the time filming starts, if the cast changes during production, if the trailers are worrisome, I know I'm not going to make that trip to the theater. I'll wait till it's available on cable or a streaming service that I'm subscribed to. The more that that happens, the less willing I'll be to take a risk on an original hero film, a new director, or first-time actors. The second instance, and this may already be happening, but I don't want production studios to latch too tightly to this trend. I'm concerned that the potential for the next money grab with the superhero film will shut out an opportunity for another film from a different genre. It's a little bit of an exaggeration, but I don't want to go to the theater in the near future, and my only options for a film are superhero movies. We need a balance of all genres to give us a break from the wave of superhero films. I don't want legendary studios, New Line Cinemas, Lionsgate, etc. to stop investing in other film genres out there just so that they can get in the next superhero lottery. Another question that we need to ask ourselves is whether or not we the consumers believe that the theaters are the best medium for this content. I'm sure you see where I'm going with this, but it comes as no surprise why people were in such an uproar over the cancellation of Netflix's original series, Daredevil, The Defenders, Jessica Jones, Punisher, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist. We got a chance to see how vastly different storytelling and character development could be when directors and the rest of the cast ensemble have 12 hours to tell a story as opposed to an hour and a half. Yes, there were other live-action superhero television shows like The Hulk, Wonder Woman, the original Flash, Batman, The Tick, Blade, etc., but those shows didn't follow a predetermined script that was to be carried out over the course of 10 to 13 episodes. Their format was more episodic in nature, often not depending on the events of the previous episode to advance the story, culminating in a finale with an overarching plotline or theme. The elephant in the room, however, is that theaters are much more accessible than streaming services, and with that, the money involved is vastly different. I may eventually eat my words here in the face of the recent moves Disney's made towards launching their streaming service and acquiring Fox's entities, but I'd welcome that moment. 
For at least the next three to five years, theaters will end up being the more lucrative option for studios. If you can't tell already, I would prefer to have the superhero films adapted into the Netflix model. I think the lack of fully fleshed out stories, characters, and environments for the most part have been my biggest gripes with the superhero films of late, most recently my experience being with Captain Marvel. I believe an added bonus of this format would be that it would put a curb on double casting, where the same actor is called upon to play two different roles in a comic series. Some examples being Ryan Reynolds cast as Deadpool and Green Lantern, Josh Brolin being cast as Cable and Thanos, Halle Berry being cast as Catwoman and Storm, Ben Affleck being cast as Daredevil and Batman, Michael B. Jordan being cast as Killmonger and Johnny Storm, the list goes on and on. I can't imagine actors being double cast or replaced multiple times as with the Hulk and Spider-Man movies happening in this format. Continuity is important. One final point I want to make on this is that Netflix has shown us that there is a desire for interactive films with Black Mirror's Bandersnatch and now with Bear Grylls' You vs. The Wild. How interesting would it be to make all the crucial decisions for your superhero story? Who would you protect? Who would you harm? Who would you forgive? The possibilities are endless. For the directors that are feeling extra ambitious, why not take your script to video game developers? Video games have been influencing films for decades. Take your pick with Mortal Kombat, Tomb Raider, Street Fighter, Rampage, Doom, or Resident Evil. Even recently, there's been rumors of movies for Metal Gear Solid, The Division, Sonic the Hedgehog, and Gears of War. I feel like the market has been proven to tell great superhero stories with the Batman Arkham Knight series, the Injustice series, and most recently with Spider-Man. The advantages with this medium is that you don't have to put your actors or their doubles in as much danger with stunts. You can tap on more actors for roles, be they younger or older age, in shape or out of shape. However, the biggest drawbacks, though, are again, accessibility for those that don't play video games or don't have the specific console. But more challenging than that is that you'll need a savvy development team to bring your ideas to life. Very difficult to get right on all fronts, but absolutely possible. All right, guys, I'll leave the conversation there for now, but I want to hear from you all. Are you enjoying this trend of superhero films? Which film are you most looking forward to? And what did you think, of Captain Marvel? Be sure to put your thoughts and reactions in the comments below, and I'll be sure to respond. As always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and follow us on Twitter. Thanks for your time, guys. Peace.